What's good everybody? Today, you might be wondering why I'm holding a 5150 in my hand. That's because I'm not sponsored by them, okay, yet. But it's because it's going to help the CX-500 start up faster. That's what we're going to start this video off with. I'm going to try to fire up this bad boy. It's been about two months or so. I just turned the fuel on, so it's fueling up as we speak. I got my people with me, a bunch of my subscribers. I don't want to keep them waiting, so let's get, let's get to this. Let's do it. still runs, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, let's get working on the uh, little bike. I've been reading forums, I've been reading, researching everything I can. There's a few things I haven't tried yet that I came across, so we're gonna try it out today. Hopefully you can get it fixed, so let's do it. So since it's been a while, uh, since my last video on the XL100S, I thought I might as well sh remind you what the problem that we're dealing with is. Um, so what we're facing is these lights both turn on at the same time and they don't blink. But apparently this is a pretty common issue. I've been reading some forums. Um, oh, another update, cool update, is I actually got a six volt tail light. Um, so this isn't, this isn't powered by the magic box, um, which these front two are, because these are 12 volt lights in front. But this is a six volt tail light. Brake light, nice and bright. So yeah, man, I'm excited, that's pretty cool. I'll give you guys the link once, uh, this is actually on Amazon Prime. I'll let you guys know. So the first thing we're going to check today are the grounds. Apparently this is actually a pretty big problem for older bikes like this. A lot of people on the forums are suggesting check the grounds first, make sure your grounds are good, uh, and then check the battery, make sure it's actually putting out enough power um, to, to make the signals flash. And then check the, the relay, the flasher relay, make sure that that's not defective or some such. Um, and then after that, well, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> so let's hope it's one of those three things. Um, hopefully it's an easy fix that I just missed, um, but we'll see. Somebody was actually having this issue, um, and they said it would only flash if the bike was on and over 3,000 RPMs. So I'm actually just going to fire it up right now, see if, uh, I don't, I think I've done this already. I think it didn't help at all, but we'll check. We'll just make sure. So that didn't do anything. Let's let's just start off by checking the grounds, make sure that those aren't causing the problems. So let's do that. I've also heard that 5150 makes every job easier. So I'll definitely be drinking some of this while I'm doing this job. 5150, feel free to sponsor me. We're in the same area. We'd be a good fit. <laughs> All right. So I actually decided I'm gonna try the uh, make sure the flasher relay is not the problem here. Yeah, I didn't expect it to do anything, but never hurts to try. Okay, so it looks like the grounds are good. Um, so we'll move on. Let's try the actual flasher grounds, the actual turn signal grounds. See if there's a difference. No, nah, it's all the same. The grounds are fine. What's good guys? So it's been a couple days since that last clip that you just saw because I was getting turn signals all sorted out, getting everything all figured out. And then I go to turn on the bike to test, test the signals, click, the ignition breaks. Um, and this is actually a problem with these bikes, especially these dirt bike ignitions um, in the 80s and whatever, because the, the Trail 90 also this happened to it before. Um, so when this went out, it was kind of stupid, but I guess it's better it goes out now while I'm building it than later when I'm trying to ride it home or some stupid stuff like that. 
but it's broken. Um, so it's been a couple days just because I was getting my new ignition switch uh, from Amazon. I'll link that in the description below. Um, pretty nice quality switch here. Um, so I'm not too concerned. Um, it does fit on this bike. Thank the Lord. It was, it's one of these universal ignition switches that are just like, uh, should fit most Chinese 50cc to 250cc bikes. So it fits this one, hallelujah. Um, I just need to figure out the wiring though, that's the only problem. So we'll also be diving into that today, getting this figured out, because I got my girl coming down from LA tomorrow, coming up from LA tomorrow. I'm gonna be picking her up at the train station at 12 p.m. sharp, and this thing's gotta be ready for her. I told her she could ride it. And so yeah, so yeah, let's get to this right now. The daylight's running out again, so let's do this. So yeah, as you can see, there's uh, some clips that are broken off. These clips are right here. Um, and so it's kind of just disappointing because I really like that key. This key is pretty sweet, I think. It's like nice and small, and it just fits perfectly with this cafe bike. Super cute little key, but um, it, it shattered, so. Um, I already did my best attempt to JB weld this thing with the strongest JB weld there was. Um, it did hold for a little bit, but after a couple turns of the key, it did break loose. Um, and so that's the story of that. Yeah, as I just mentioned, it, it was also a problem on this Trail 90. Um, the ignition just breaks right out of there, as you can see. Um, we haven't had a chance to mess with this one yet just because there is no, I know you really can't see this, but there's no space. Um, beneath the cluster here to pull that ignition switch out. Okay, so let's take a quick look at this wiring. Um, I know they're a little bit different, so I think the most common practice for an ignition swap like this is just cutting the wires. They, they look like they're actually pretty color coordinated, um, but cutting the wires off of both um, connectors and then just soldering the wires together uh, into the stock connectors so this one can bolt straight up. Yeah, but this, this it's really not bad. I hope I think the switch should be fine, um, but we'll see. I mean, it's definitely not perfect. The little uh, boot, it's coming off. The, the solder joints look pretty good, so I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, so this switch is just a little bit longer than this switch, um, and so what I was having trouble with, I put it in here, and this little bracket was just touching the bottom there. I need to go just a couple millimeters further, so what I'm gonna do is bend this little bracket here, um, and that should do the trick. I think that was actually a good fix for, uh, I think the bracket was just not crimped quite tight enough. That's why this little rubber boot was coming out of the, um, of the switch. So that should do the trick though. Um, so let's, let's see if that will fit in. It's actually a pretty cool design switch. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Man, that is solid. I'm really happy with that. That's a really solid design. Okay, I'm in, I'm impressed. I'm really impressed with that. And both keys work, I would assume. Yep. All right, man. Like, look at that. That's not moving at all. Now when I resell it on Craigslist, I can say, yeah, I have the OEM spare key with it. All right, let me give it the good old fashioned shot, trying to get this thing figured out as far as wiring goes. Okay, so the wiring diagram tells me that this, um, the ignition wire, it actually splits. It goes one wire to two wires to go into the connector and then it runs throughout the wiring of the bike. Um, something that this switch does not have. If you can see this black wire with the white stripe, I think these, by the way, are wired the same. The red is the solenoid, solenoid side, green is ground, and these are the ignition wires. Um, but this one, as I said, the ignition wire actually splits off into two wires, something that this does not have. So I'm gonna have to branch this out and uh, I'm just gonna, how about let's just strip this back and see what I can see, how about that? How about that? So the only downside about this switch, it's a really fairly nice switch. It's, I mean, it's nothing spectacular, but for $7, I can't complain. Um, the only thing about this on Amazon, it doesn't come with a wiring diagram, so you kind of have to just go by ear. Um, essentially. There's really nothing online, so I guess this video is kind of actually important. Um, so I'll try to do a good job on it. Alright. Yeah, so we clearly have five wires at this point. Let's keep cutting see what I can find. And there's some mini bike forms that have some stuff about this, but nobody has a freaking diagram. So this, uh, as I was saying, this ignition wire 
it starts with there, um, soldered on there, and then it splits into two wires right here. So I'm thinking with this new switch, if I just, if I cut this wire at the base here and solder that one wire that splits into two wires onto this single wire and then just use um, the stock wire and connect it where it needs to be connected, I think that will be a super easy fix for this. All right, so now I just have to strip these wires down so I, they are exposed and then we can get to uh, the various sections like soldering and, and whatnot. All right, so all the wires are exposed now. I'm going to assume, just for now, since we're running out of daylight, that these wires are actually wired up the exact same as the stock harness that the, the stock wires are. And, um, and we'll just start connecting those. Okay, so now I can start connecting these wires to see what will actually turn the bike on. So now comes the real test. Um, what I'm going to do is start off um, by wiring this how it should, how I think it should be wired, um, just based on the colors. I'm just going to twist these all together. We'll just assume this is ground, so if I put it uh, anywhere, here is the moment of truth if this is wired correctly and color matched. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's, oh wait. <laughs> does green, green does nothing? Um, I don't know, but okay, we'll actually start the bike to make, I'm super happy that this is actually the case. Um, turn signals work still, okay, everything works. Um, which means the accessory wire is perfect, okay. Um, so basically, we'll, I'll just start this, make sure that the ignition is actually connected, um, and see if it works. Okay, so it does work. It, it, I'm super happy. Let's get this soldered up and the ignition is all good. Now let's see if it'll turn it off. Oh, no, it didn't. Wait. Okay, so the switch works. I did, if you saw, I clicked it and there was a small delay. I'm thinking just because the wires aren't actually perfectly connected yet and soldered in. Um, so we'll assume it works and get these soldered in. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the switch feels really solid. Um, I don't think it will break anytime soon. Wiring was super easy. Um, it matched straight up to the Honda wiring. So red to red, black, white to black, white, black to black, green to green, um, soldered it in, put it back into the headlight assembly and it was good to go. So I think this should be a really good switch over time. So having finally finished with the ignition switch, I moved on to working with the turn signals once again. Right now I'm doing something, I'm taking off the cover for the turn signal indicator light and the neutral light. Um, what I found out is that if the two circuits are connected from the left and right turn signals, so I found that if you take out the turn signal indicator, it would actually probably solve the problem. So here you can see it actually did solve the problem. Since the two circuits, um, the left and right turn signals, go into that one light, that's the, the point where they connect. Um, with the LED lights, it was actually trickling through to the other side and that's what was causing the problem. So once I took that bulb out, it solved the problem. All right, so that looks like it fixed the problem. All I did was take the turn signal indicator bulb out. It looks like it was burnt out. I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably the stock bulb from the 80s. Um, so eventually it just gave out. That's probably why it was so dim all the time before it just stopped lighting. Um, so it's probably burnt out. I took it out. It solved the problem um, of the all four turn signals turning on at once. And so that's super encouraging. Now pretty much all I need to do is install the resistors. So basically how it's wired is the left turn signal circuit and the right turn signal circuit both go into that same bulb. 
um, and so when you turn on one side it actually runs through the bulb and since there was so much current still in the system because I put LEDs on it it was actually trickling into the other circuit and lighting all those bulbs up as well um, so I'm super happy that this um, that I found the solution by taking out the turn signal bulb I would like the turn signal indicator light to work as it should so I'll probably order some LEDs and see if I can get that working on another note there was a fire right over there today images for your viewing pleasure uh, so that's kind of cool I mean like come for the motorcycles stay for the natural disasters but yeah it's solved I'm so happy this was seriously such a headache to figure out I'm definitely gonna be doing like a full run through video of exactly how to solve this issue because it was a huge pain like weeks literally weeks of trying to figure this out like trying everything that I possibly could couldn't figure it out and then I saw one and like on the internet it's all spread out all over the web little tiny pieces of how to fix certain things and then for this bike I have to kind of put all those pieces together so I finally hopefully figured it out so I'll definitely be doing a, a video just running through step by step how to solve this so everybody else doesn't have to go through the same pain that I did alright well I think I'll end the video there um, yeah I think I'll end it here and then we'll, we'll start working through it once I get these turn signals actually flashing probably next episode um, then I can go get it registered and plated so that's gonna be super awesome hopefully hopefully get it registered and plated California has so many stupid restrictions on stuff like this I don't know if I'll be able to but we'll give it our best shot and we'll get it done I'll have to drive it illegally if I have to but it's gonna happen so time for 5150, I'll see you guys in the next episode.